In order for us to be able to use the entity framework, we need to have a data context in place. This is basically the bridge between our code and the database. So I'm going to create another folder and I'll call it DB contexts. And here I'm going to add a class and I'll call it band album context. Well, right now it's just a regular class. In order to make it a DB context class, it needs to inherit from DB context. And DB context is in a namespace Microsoft Entity Framework Core, which is the NuGet that we installed in our application. So let's create a constructor for this class. And here we will inject the DB context. So it's going to be a DB context. And you can see we have several op options here. And the one that we want is DB context options. And we want it of the type that is our own DB context, which is the band album context. And I'll just call this options. And here we will pass the options to the base class of the DB context. So we will pass it to our base, which is the DB context, and we'll pass it the options variable, which is of type DB context options of type band album context. And this is our constructor. We don't need anything else here because everything will be passed down to our DB context from this class. So now, remember, we have two entities, album and bands. And in order for us to use them, we need to create DB sets for each of them. So let's create a property. And the first one is going to be a DB set. And DB set is basically the table that's going to be inside the Microsoft Entity Framework. So this is going to be DB set of type band. And in order to use that, we of course need to bring in the namespace, which is in the entities folder. And I'll call this bands. And the second one is going to be for our album. So it's going to be a DB set of type album. And I'll call it albums. So this is our DB context that will use the album and band entities in order to create the tables inside the entity framework and allows us to interact with those tables later on. But if you created it like this, we would have basically an empty database. There would be nothing there. We want some sample data there. So next, let's create a seeding method that will allow us to seed the database with some sample data.